How are you doing, Charlie? I'm doing very well, Mark. Thank you. You know, we, we're here. We're from Pathway Presbyterian Church. And one of the things, Charlie, that we were discussing prior to, you know, going live is the state of the church. Correct. Which we're in. And for our folks out there uh, who don't have any idea what's going on, mm -hmm. explain to us what Le who Legionnaire is and this survey. And let's talk a, a couple things about this particular survey. Right. Well, Ligonier, Ligonier Ministry, every two years, they put out a survey form about the um, theological understanding of both Christians and non-Christians in the United States. And they coordinate that through Lifeway books. But Lifeway books has got a very, very good polling uh, group that goes nationwide. And they ask very specific questions. They ask them to church members. And they also ask them to the just general public at large. And at the end of that, they do a summation by percentage points. Uh, how the culture and how the world looks at the church, but more importantly, how the church looks at itself, especially on very strong belief systems, including the truth claims of the Bible. So that's, that's the, I, I do care a lot what Legionnaire is doing because what it enables the church to see, mm -hmm. hey, are we living by the word of God? Is, are we formulating our doctrines according to scripture mm -hmm. or are we gathering our doctrines that will fit into the culture? Exactly. And this, this actually will benefit the listener who attends a church. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and of course, we also have to guard the cult of um, worshiping the, the leader or any, any leader that's professing. Mm -hmm. But there's a couple of texts in Scripture I want us to really get into. Okay. And really listen to. The first one is in Acts chapter 20 verse 26 and this is where the apostle paul is urging the leaders the elders of the church to be on guard now paul probably you know this is probably written around between 55 and 60 a.d and what paul says and it speaks to us today he says therefore in acts 20 26 i testify to you this day that i am innocent of the blood of all now, how could he, an elder, uh, be innocent of the blood of all? And here's the reason. For I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole counsel of God. Mm -hmm. And that's important because as pastors, ministers, as part of, the, of, of Vanguard Presbytery and Pathway Presbyterian Church being a mission of Vanguard, um, we're about that very word and giving it the whole counsel to everybody not just abbreviating it to build the church he continues he, t he gives us a warning he says pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the holy spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of god which he obtained with his own blood now he starts there. Now here's what he says. In verse 29, I know that after my departure, fierce wolves will come in among you. So the first thing the apostle warns is from outside, fierce wolves, ravaging wolves are going to come in. They're going to come into the church. They're going to come into the body. And they're not sparing the flock. They don't care about you. They're only caring about themselves and what they could put in their pockets. But with smooth teaching, with flattery words, they're going to tell you what you want to hear. And you see that all the time. He continues in verse 30, and from among your own selves. Mm -hmm. Now, these are the ones that it's not easy to recognize because <clears throat> you've been fellowshipping with them. Uh, you like them. You begin to become appreciative of the way they speak. He says, and from among your own selves will arise men speaking twisted things. Their goal is to draw away disciples after them. And folks, that's important because ultimately that person wants you to follow their interpretation of the word. And our duty is to be Bereans, 
read these things in its context. Remember, it's not what I would preach, Charlie. It's not what you would preach. Mm -hmm. It's how faithful are we to the author's intent of what the meaning he's trying to bring about, and also how does the author's intent show the coherency of Scripture. Mm -hmm. He continues, he says, therefore be alert. Now folks, if you saw a sign that says beware a dog, and I was a paper boy, you're going to be <laughs> on guard and look, and he's saying be alert remembering for three years. Mm -hmm. I did not cease night or day to admonish everyone with tears. You know why Paul would come would break down in tears? Simply because he knows they will draw people after themselves and the people who are drawn to these cultic figures, this mesmerizing, mesmerizing um, speaker, they're out to steal your soul. You're, they're out to steal your soul because ultimately you follow that person. Then he says this, I now commend you to God. Mm -hmm into the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all those who are set apart so he, the first thing he points to is the word of his grace the bible is special revelation right charlie exactly. talk about what, what special revelation is yeah special revelation is something that comes directly from god in the old testament church it came directly from god to man by voice it came from prophets from God to man by voice. And it also did come from some of the earlier uh, scripture writings of Moses and the laying down of the law and how that developed through the judge, judge right, system. Right, right. So when he talks about special revelation, he's talking about something that comes from a triune God that's either the Father, the Son, or the Holy Spirit. They're all in all the same. And that special revelation is contained where? It's in the Bible. It's, it's in the it, Word of God. Uh, sola Scriptura is what the Reformation called it. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. It's the voice of God in His Word, which doesn't change, just like His mm -hmm. nature. Exactly. Now, in 1 Corinthians 2.14, going back to what Paul said, when you have false teachers coming in, people trying to get disciples after themselves, mm -hmm. and our role is to make disciples that hear and follow Jesus Christ. Listen to his voice in the word of God. Why? Because man can twist it. That's what Paul warns us. He says this in 1 Corinthians 2.14. This is an important verse. Why? Because it's supposed to make aware that those who come in amongst us and those fierce wolves that come in from outside of us have one grounding. They haven't been born again. Mm -hmm. they're the natural man exactly and here's what Paul says <clears throat> inspired by the Holy Spirit he says the natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God mm -hmm. for they are foolish to him and he is not able to understand them because they have to be spiritually discerned God has to open up your eyes to see his word, to test everything. Paul says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 21, test everything. What standard do we test it by? And what's the difference in our culture today with so-called prophets and apostles and people who are getting words from here? You go to those churches, Charlie, right? And you've seen this. Uh, each church is supposedly guided by the Holy Spirit. They get revelation from God. And on one block, the inconsistency within that one block on that revelation shows that these are false prophets, mm -hmm. false teachers. There are two means on which God speaks. And this is what he talks about. In 2 Timothy 3.16, he speaks to the product, what we're to go to to hear the voice of God. And 2 Peter speaks of the process in which God brought it. In 2 Timothy 3.16, the Holy Spirit tells us all Scripture is breathed out by God. Mm -hmm. Now, what does it mean to breathe out by God? Let's go back to creation. Adam was created from the dirt. He's a, he's a piece of dirt. That's all he is, right? Just like us, mm -hmm. clay. Inanimate. There was no life into him until what? God breathed into him. Mm -hmm. And then he became a living soul. Exactly. That's God's word. Mm -hmm. God's word is alive. 
It's able to pierce. It's able to transform. It's able to correct, to instruct. The apostle says, all scripture is breathed out by God. It's profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. Mm -hmm. That's what we're here for, and that's where we're going to do these mini 15-minute segments on the Ligonier survey, but I want us to grasp, grasp this clearly. Scripture is what we turn to, to be corrected, to be taught, to be reproved. Peter says, just to go back on it, he says, and this is, speaks to the process, for no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man. But men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. That's key. Because people will take that and say, yes, I'm guided by the Holy Spirit. But see, what we have to do is when a preacher's preaching or when a, a, a church is standing on something and they come out with a statement, the task of the believer, the disciple of Christ, is to take that premise statement and to see where it comes from. How they get away with it, though, Charlie, is they say, the Holy Spirit has put it on my heart to tell you this. Number one, the heart, God tells us, is so deceitful that it can fool the person who's even talking. Mm -hmm. uh, and the idea that your premise starts out here, whereas those who are committed to the Word of God, it comes from the text. That's why Isaiah, who warned the church in the Old Testament, the same way we have to warn the church today, to the teaching and to the testimony, that's the Word of God, if they will not speak according to this word, there is no light in them. Mm -hmm. They may look like they got light in them, but there is none. And Proverbs 30. Now, these are important verses, folks, because when, when we do our next segment, this is the first one, we're going to key in on these, and I will remind everyone, God tells us that every word of God proves true. Mm -hmm. That means even the word the, of, participles, you know, prepositions, adjectives, nouns, verbs. God speaks to his word anthropomorphic, mm -hmm. using our language so we could bring forth his infinite wisdom in a way that we can grasp it by his spirit. He says, every word of God proves true. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him, refuge in his word refuge in his revelation. Then he says this, do not add to his words, lest he rebuke you and you be found a liar. Mm -hmm. Next week, our second segment is going to talk about one of the things, Charlie, uh, on the Legionnaire platform in the survey. And what was that survey on about human nature? What did they say? Pretty much 65% or above say that man is innocent. In other words, he is born with a blank slate and that it's a society that either makes him good or bad. But even evangelicals at a very high rate, they uh, completely say that man is born good and he's innocent. And when they do that, they're either misinformed by their teachers, they're not thinking through it, but what that does, it does away with the atonement of Christ. Why do you need Christ? Why do you need salvation right. by faith alone? Yes. Why, why do you need so, you know, just on, right on down. It gives the option to create a new deity. Exactly. So really, the only one that's getting the glory is man himself. So what was the percentage between those who are not church attendees okay. and those that go to church? What's the... What's the uh, yes. I wrote these down. 71% of people in America today believe that man is basically good, so therefore they are they can make the correct choices on their own with or without any kind of assistance. If they're educated to the right way, if they go to the correct schools, if they listen to the psychiatrist, they listen to the sociologist, they can make their way with self-empowerment, self-improvement. Now that is 71%. What is really scary in the church today is that 61% of so-called identified evangelicals are saying the same thing. So they have either been 
It's a 10% difference. It's a, yeah, that's it. It's not much. So they've either been taught the wrong way or they don't understand the way that they were, you know, were taught. But what it does, it literally unhinges everything in the Bible concerning the imputation of Christ, what man needs, and salvation. Not only in the New Testament, but in the Old Testament church as well, which we call the remnant, and the New Testament in the church, which we call the elect. Right, the right, right. Mm -hmm. All right, well, stay tuned for our next broadcast on this, and we're going to get into that a little bit more okay. deeper. Right. Thank you, Charlie. Sure, sure. I'm glad we could help, Mike. Okay.